next guest is a California congressman and author who served as co-chair for Bernie Sanders' 2020 campaign, taught economics at Stanford, and worked in the Obama administration. His new book is called Dignity in a Digital Age. Please welcome Congressman Ro Khanna. Congressman, thanks for being here. Uh, the book is Dignity in a Digital Age, and we'll get to that in, in just one moment, but you've been writing uh, since you were in your teens, getting published, too, I might add. Here is you... Uh, you uh, schooled George H.W. Bush in the lead-up <laughs> to the first Gulf War. Let me read a couple of these, these uh, clips here that were in an, a letter that you sent to the Bucks County, Pennsylvania Courier-Times. <laughs> First of all, why did you want to write uh, about the president and the, the possibility of this impending war? Well, I've long cared about human rights. My grandfather spent four years in jail uh, alongside Gandhi during the Indian independence movement. I mean, your comments about white construction helping colonialism was dead on. And so that influenced me to care about peace and human rights, and I was opposed to going to war just for material re reasons. So you're 14 right here. You say, with the animosity between Iraq and the United States escalating, the chances of war occurring increases as each day passes. You go on to say, this is a war that will be brought on because of a materialistic society that evaluates only on the economic aspect. Go on to say, every soldier's life has a priceless monetary value. We should demand full support, both militarily and economically, from all the other nations we must have no doubts before engaging in war. And so that 14-year-old has a very clear-eyed look about foreign intervention. You're on armed services, right? Now, given the, the Russian buildup on uh, the Ukrainian border, uh, well, we're facing, you know, 30 years later, facing another potential war. Um, what should the United States strategy be versus this uh, either imminent invasion or very dangerous saber-rattling by Putin? Well, first, there's absolutely no justification for Putin to invade Ukraine, and we have to be clear about that. Uh, second, we want to exhaust all diplomatic options, and I think we have some time, hopefully, because I don't think Putin is likely to go in during the Olympics, uh, especially uh, because of his relationship with China. And so the president has made it clear that there will be tough financial sanctions, but he ought to have a diplomatic uh, solution and actually Ukraine's own president is calling for calm. And I hope he and Secretary Blinken will exhaust the diplomatic solutions, and I think they can avoid war. We have to avoid war. Um, your district... I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Um, let's get to the book here. Your, your district is home to Apple, Intel, and Yahoo, and your new book, uh, Dignity in the Digital Age, is about how to make tech work for all of us. Um, first question, and I mean this semi-seriously, what is the Internet? <laughs> and I don't it's mean, a, like, series of tunes. Yeah. I mean, what has it become as opposed to what its intention was? Those are the simple questions that are the hardest. But here's how I would define it. Uh, it's a network of computers connected that allow us to communicate, share ideas in a virtual space. I've always thought of it as an agreement between these computers as to how we will communicate with each other, and that the problem now, certainly in terms of privacy, is that some of us are being uh, harvested without our knowledge. So no communication is given to us about the knowledge that is taken from us. I the agreement is one-sided. I completely agree. I mean, and it's compromising your freedom. I mean, think about it. Uh, these people who are running these big tech companies can know what you're going to purchase, they may even be able to know what you're going to think. They may know uh, what you're next going to do based on your data. And they can take your data and get political candidates that you don't support to have an advantage, even if you don't want them to. And that's why I think an Internet Bill of Rights is so important. Uh, Tim Cook has a great Stanford commencement address where he says the freedom to be human is contingent on a respect for privacy. And is pr privacy necessary for dignity? Absolutely. I mean, how can you have a freedom to think, a freedom to be free, a freedom to make mistakes if every single thing you're doing uh, is being collected. And then you know what they do? They collect this information 
and they'd target the most vulnerable. I mean, QAnon grew because Facebook and other platforms intentionally targeted people with conspiracy theories and led to that growth. And then, you know, Instagram for teenagers, it's like your worst experience in junior high magnified. And it's, it's leading to teenagers, it's serious. I mean, teenagers, depression, teenagers suicide, are committing suicide because of this. They know what's going on and they can stop it. They don't have to have everyone like everything. They don't have to have everyone share anything and they have to stop the misinformation. I mean, you don't come on this show and spew misinformation. I mean, the whole, think about if you did that, if you'd spent your hour telling lies to the country. Well, why don't you do it? It's not because you fear being sued. It's not because you, you fear some political repercussions. It's because you have some sense that beyond the comedy, beyond the ratings, you've got something you want to do public good, right? Why should it be different for social media? Maybe you don't. I'm I don't checking know. with my producer. That's why we do it. <laughs> that is why we do it. He's telling me that's why we do it. You, 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 you write. You write, the dirty secret in Silicon Valley is that Congress will hold a hearing but nothing changes. But you want to create an Internet Bill of Rights. What's in it? Like, give me what are the top three things that have to be in that bill to make a difference? Biggest thing is before someone can collect your data, you need to say, yes, you can take the data. So the default is privacy. Default. The default is privacy, and we have to opt in. Exactly. Because right now, the default is they get your data and you have to click everything to figure out how not to give them your data. Mm. I mean, no one does that. And these user service agreements, I mean, how many people actually read the user service agreement? That's not I read the part that says, I agree. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And they manipulate it. They, they have dark patterns. They put the box bigger with the right color so you click on it. I mean, it's a very sophisticated thing. But the very basic is no data should go without your consent. The second part should be that you should know what's happening to your data. And right now, there's no way of knowing. If we had known, then Cambridge Analytica probably wouldn't have happened because nonprofits would have known about it, they would have asked about it, and they wouldn't have allowed Donald Trump or other candidates to use data. But it's offensive that people who didn't support a candidate's data was used against their will to support that candidate. To, I mean, that's not democracy if your information is being used against your will to support a candidate you don't support. Well, Congressman, thank you so much for being here. The book is Dignity in a Digital Age. It's available starting tomorrow. Congressman Ro Khanna, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs>